I am a winner. Yeah, say it with me. I am a winner. Say it again. I am a winner. See, there is no possibility of failure in God's kingdom. God has never failed. God has never lost. You're a winner today. I declare to you today I am a winner, not because of who I am or what I am or what I possess, but because I'm a child of God. And Jesus has already won the victory. My friend, it doesn't matter what you're going through today. It doesn't matter what you've encountered. You may be at the apex of a battle. You're still going to win. You may be duking it out with the devil, but I'm telling you, you're still going to win. The line has already been written. The chapter has been written. You come out a winner every time. You've got to believe that. Never give up. There's no precedent in the Bible for giving up. God determines how long the test will last, not we. I, I can't give up. Can't throw in the towel. Hallelujah. I got too much. I don't come from a land of quitters. Praise the name of our God. I'm going through a hard time, but this ain't the first time I've had to face a hard time. I see a, we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us then lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset us. I'm, I'm trying to be a winner walking around with low self-esteem. No, that ain't you. What's wrong with you? Acting like you nobody. Looking down when you haven't lost anything. Laughing when ain't nothing funny. What's wrong with you? Lay aside every weight of mediocrity and low self-esteem. Talk about you can't do this and you can't do that. Talk about they won't let me make it the blues. Your anthem song. Don't know why I feel so black and blue. Been down so long. Getting up haven't even crossed my mind. Are you crazy? Rise up out of that pit. No self-esteem ever. Ever pit. Lay aside that weight in the name of Jesus, feeding every base appetite in you and neglecting the appetite of excellence that is also in you. Hallelujah. Never give up. There's no precedent in the Bible for giving up. God determines how long the test will last, not we. Endurance. You cannot bypass endurance. You know whom I'm speaking to. You cannot bypass endurance and enter into the promises of God. You can come so far. The completeness is only through endurance. And just when it seems impossible to hold on. Just stand. Just stand. You keep standing. You keep standing. No matter how rough the sea, you keep standing. And I'm not talking about just water. You keep standing. No matter what, you don't give up. Boy, you keep standing. Standing. No matter what you don't give up. 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 Don't give in. I would like to say that to several of you individually. You're in the test. You're doing all right. Just hang in there. Don't back out. Don't give up. God is faithful. 
I've been asked sometimes if I had a message to leave for posterity, what would it be? I always say I can give it to you in three words. God is faithful. Act like you got a backbone. Act like you know who you are. Act like you somebody. Throw off those weights and then run the race. Run the race. Run the race. Come on, run your race. There is nothing that exists that's powerful enough to stop you. God gave you that vision to start that business and still you go in there to collect that paycheck from people who don't recognize your gift and your talent. You've got genius in you. You've got potential to do exceedingly abundantly. And you're making do with just getting a paycheck. That's not true. That's somebody else's story. You cannot be stopped. You cannot be stopped. You cannot be stopped. Put your hands on Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith. Today I believe that God put you on this earth for such a time as this. You didn't show up on your birthday and God went, whoops, <laughs> he slipped through the cracks. God brought you here because he has a purpose for you. He knows you so well, he's numbered the hairs on your head. He knows you so well that he's ordered your steps and counted the length of your days. He's placed you here, not by accident, not by chance, not by fortune, but he brought you to this moment in time because he believes in you. Everything that he has done in your life is because he believes in you. Every blessing that you've ever received is because he believed in you. Every battle you've ever fought and won is because he believed in you. Every breath that you've ever breathed is because he believed in you. Romans tells us we know all things. Say that with me. All things work together for good. All things, the good, the bad, the difficult, the sad, the hard, the happy, the joyful, every moment of it, all has worked together. What you thought would kill you, God says, I can use that. What you couldn't make sense of, God said, I can use that. When you threw your hands up and said, I quit, God said, I can use that. Why? Not because of you, but because he believes in you. He said, you're more than a conqueror. He said, whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it. He said, I'll give my angels charge over you that they may take care of you wherever you go. Church, in spite of everything you are and in spite of everything that you're not, the moment that you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, that's the moment that the God of heaven looks from earth and He does not call you for what you used to be. He now calls you His son. He calls you His daughter. He calls you His child. He embraces you like a loving father. He wraps His almighty arms around you and He sees you for who you are and what you can be. Others may call you by your past mistakes but he said all things have passed away and behold all things have become new others may look at you and say there's nothing good that's going to come from you but God looks at you and he says if you're weak I'll make you strong if you're poor I'll make you rich if you're broken I'll make you mended if you're dead I'll bring you back to life because that's the kind of God we serve greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world no matter what trouble we face, no matter what tribulation we go through, in the end, God is going to win. In the end, the Lamb of God will triumph. In the end, Jesus will be victorious. In Christ, there are no losers. In Christ, no matter how much difficulty there is, in Jesus, you can be a winner. 
The greatest definition I ever heard. I thought about this 10 million times when I wanted to quit along the way of a winner. This guy said almost everybody in America can stay excited for two or three months. A few people can stay excited for two or three years. But a winner will stay excited for 30 years or ever how long it takes to win. Another key to building this winning edge and this mental toughness is you've got to become a dreamer again. You know, I'm a Methodist and we just changed ministers a few weeks ago and our new minister came in and, and the uh, church was just packed. And the first thing he said, he said, well, it looks like everybody came out to see the monkey perform. And the second, the second thing out of his mouth, he said, for a church to be a great church, you got to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, you're dead. And boy, I sat up and I said, man, me and this guy are going to get along good because he knows what he's talking about. See, folks, I believe in order to win, you got to feel good about yourself. Folks, there ain't nothing you can't do in America if you want to bad enough. Another key in building this winning edge is, folks, you got to stand for something. People in America, the good people in America are fed up with here with these dadgum fence sitters and mealy mouths. My first heroes in this business were vice presidents at ITT making forty or $50,000 a year. And I said, man, if I could ever get to be that kind of person, it'd be a dream come true. I couldn't want any more out of life. A few years later, I earned the right to get promotions to that level and found so many of my heroes in business. Their personal lives were a disaster. They were alcoholics and divorced three and four and five times. I just read an article by the author of, of In Search of Excellence. And I saw where he says, I can't find evidence of any successful business person in America that's not tunnel vision, that just doesn't give everything to business. Folks, I, I, I said back then, 15 years ago, that if that's the price you've got to pay to win in business, it's not worth it. 15 years later, a multimillionaire. Folks, I can stand and preach to you that you can't separate your personal life from your business life. God's got to come first. Your family's got to come second. And business has got to come third. And I believe if you have a lousy spiritual life and a lousy personal life, long range, it's going to be devastating to your business. Another thing in building this, this winning attitude. Another thing in building this winning attitude in business. I, you, you know, I see tall people make it big in business and short people, dumb people and smart people, fat people and skinny people. But if you cut open the winners in business, I see a heart of a champion. And all these people are competitors and they don't quit. I believe desire and will to win is everything. I don't know why I'm like I am, but my butt's always burning. There's always something to say, Art Dadgummit, you're supposed to go for it. Art Dadgummit, you're supposed to be somebody. You're supposed to make a difference with your life. If you want to win in these United States, you got to be tough. And you can't quit. See, folks, I want you to know almost everybody in America almost does enough to win. They almost get there. They almost are over the hump. They almost have it going. They almost in everything they do. Almost is a way of life to almost everybody in America. But the winners do it. What do they do? They do whatever it takes to get the job done. They do it and 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 do it until the job gets done.